It's Tuesday, October 11th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a primer of the Tech Podcast Network. This is show number 618. Got a great show for you. A lot of things we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about the Windows Phone 7 debut. We're going to talk about all points bulletin for a Google car. We're going to talk about a weight loss app, and it's really not what you think. And we're going to be listening into your conversations at basketball games coming to a stadium near you shortly. I got a great show for you. You know what comes next. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go flight. Microphone. We're go flight. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. No. RSS data stream aggregator. Go flight. Interflux totism suppressor. All right. I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in. Five. Bucky, Bucky, who's got the fucking Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking greater Oahu. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Todd Cochran, and of course I want to welcome you back. It's a, it's a beautiful evening here in Honolulu. We've got great trade winds coming in the, uh, the side uh, windows in the studio. Uh, I've got my wife, my mom is still in town uh, visiting for uh, just a couple more days. And of course, I uh, get on a jet airplane and uh, head for Vegas tomorrow night. We'll talk about that uh, here in a second. But first things first, of course, I want to give a warm welcome to all of the Ohana, all the longtime listeners of the show. I want to thank all of you for uh, being here, staying subscribed, being part of the family. You know, that's what it's really all about. And if you're new to the show, I want to welcome you to the podcast. We've had a huge, huge influx of new viewers, not only subscribed to the audio portion of the show, but also to the video portion of the show. And wherever you're watching or listening to the show, I want to, of course, I want to welcome you to the family. Uh, we're streaming live right now on Justin.tv. We're up on Ustream as well. Of course, on the GeekNewCentral.com website, uh, where we always want you to come visit. We're live there as well. For those of you that are watching the show post-show on Oroku or Boxy and uh, soon to come Voodoo and Samsung, uh, we're going to uh, be ramping that up here in the next couple of weeks uh, as well. But um, new app coming to the Roku very, very soon. Matter of fact, I talked with uh, Angelo tonight and uh, final testing is done and we're going to submit the new Tech Podcast Roku update app to the Roku folks and it's really going to be Man, it's good. It's really good. And when you guys see what we've done with the uh, with the updated app, I think you're going to be excited. The Blueberry app will come a few days later, but uh, it's a um, it's just just another way to watch the show and get connected to all the great shows over at TechPodcast.com. Well, I'm going to tell you, we're uh, reaching 178 countries, and uh, proud to see that number hanging right in there uh, week to week. We hope to add a, a few more. As you're coming over to the website, make sure you sign up for our newsletter. Our newsletter contains everything, really, I, that I publish during this show or talk about during the show. Uh, I send you an email blast immediately following the show. You don't get a bunch of spam emails from me. It's just, uh, again, a show note email that uh, reminds you of what we've uh, talked about and allows you to follow along. You'll find a link to that on the website at geeknewcentral.com. Of course, subscribe to the show. That way you'll never miss a single episode, and it's important that uh, – that's you know that's the best way to stay tough with the show or stay hung, you know connected is that once you're subscribed then it doesn't really matter when you listen you know you can download the show automatically and then you just listen at your heart's content whether you're at the gym uh, driving to work whether you are you know catching me at lunchtime or early in the morning it, it doesn't matter uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, stay abreast of what's going on with the show by just uh, getting subscribed and you find that via the main website at geeknewcentral.com. Of course, I want to give a, uh, a hearty welcome to our sponsors. And we'll start out tonight talking just a little bit about uh, GoDaddy because, you know, GoDaddy, man, they have, they, they're have they really cranking on some really cool stuff. And uh, they've been coming out with a lot of new products on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, one thing that they've got offered up now in their hosting section is really kind of pre-built to go WordPress sites. 
So, you know, it's fast. It's, it's a free setup. Um, and what's cool about these new uh, these WordPress hosting sites that they've offered is that they are unlimited bandwidth. Even on the lowest priced plan, unlimited bandwidth. That just blew me away starting at $4.99 a month or for a three-month uh, subscription. And it's at $4.99 a month. If you go at 12 months, you go down to $3.99. If you go up to their ultimate plan, you can. Uh, it's a, wow! It's a it's a whopping seven dollars and ninety nine cents. And here's the beauty: when you sign up for a twelve month plan with the folks over there at GoDaddy, what you want to do is you want to use one of my promo codes, Todd twenty. That'll save you twenty percent off on a one year shared hosting account. And uh, this is a great way to save an additional twenty percent. So let's see here: eight bucks times twelve ninety six dollars. Another twenty. You know this is. They're almost giving it away. They really, really are. So get over to GoDaddy.com, check them out. Use my promo codes. Todd will save you 10% on non-domain orders. Geek5 will save you 15% on orders $20 or more. A com sale will get you uh, .coms renewed at seven forty. No, excuse me, seven something ninety nine. I think. Um, and then, of course, you can use com sale too to pick up new .coms. If you're a new customer and never have been done any business with GoDaddy. Use my geek199 code, geek199, to get $1.99 domain names. And that's unlimited domain names at $1.99 for new customers only, okay? So thanks for GoDaddy for being a continued sponsor here. They keep the lights on, folks. They really do, and we appreciate them very much. Hey, so what's going on? Well, you guys, uh, I, the, the morning tech show that I'm producing now every Saturday morning, there won't be one next week because I'm going to be in Vegas. But the, the fifth one, when I had uh, Rick Calvert on from uh, Blog World and New Media Expo and Andy McCaskey from SDR News, um, I really think that was probably the show starting to find its stream and it's fine, uh, the stream. It's trying, it's, you know, it's starting to find its pace and it's starting to find uh, the niche that it wants to go into. And I, it was a good one. It really, really was. If you're a content creator or someone wants to stay abreast of what's going on in the, in the space, uh, you're going to want to watch uh, Saturday's, uh, basically, the morning tech show. And uh, you can subscribe to that as well at the at the website. And we went an hour 30. So we went long. Actually, hour 32 is when I uh, finally told the guys, we got to stop. <laughs> and what happens is, is if the file gets above um, the compressed file, when it's all rendered, gets above a gig, what ends up happening is, is I can't send that to Blip. I can't send it to YouTube. Uh, they have a one gig limit, and when you go about about a minute tw or an hour twenty nine on length, you're no matter what you do to compress the file size to something that's usable, you're over the one gig mark. So I'm really trying to hold the guys to uh, uh, to about a you know dollar twenty nine on the time, and it just didn't happen. So uh, I've got the uh, the video up on the website using Flow Player, and uh, I'm gonna do something about that. Anybody out there a Flow Player expert? I really need a flow player expert to help me with putting in different graphics and stuff and creating an idbed. So if you were that person, drop me an email at geeknews at gmail.com. Of course, if you have comments on today's show at all, anything whatsoever, geeknews at gmail.com is your catch-all email address for stuff going on with the show. And, of course, you can always call our voicemail hotline to uh, uh, bring your own comments or, or commentary about uh, topics that are going on. And, again, if you've got something you want me to, sh to share with the audience, please do that. And you can pick up a telephone or call on Skype. Uh, do that at just really dialing 619-342-7365. If you're outside of the United States, make sure you add that plus one in there, plus one, 619-342-7365 to, uh, to reach the show. How many of you uh, noticed anything different about the last audio file that was uh, put up for the show? Any of you notice any difference to the show? Well, we got all done here. <laughs> Thursday night recording and I uh, went over to render but well, what I basically was doing was a, a waveform uh, group waveform analysis that basically raises the level uh, uniformly across the file so I started it to work and I said oh man I made the wrong setting and I reached over to hit cancel and poof <laughs> the file was gone and I was like where did it go and I mean it just flat out disappeared never to be recovered again so the uh, the backup device, the H4N recorder, what's sitting is here cranking away right now. You know, one of like 
like that's only happened now once in like a hundred shows, and thank God that was running there. There would have been no audio <laughs> or lower quality audio uh, from the last uh, podcast. So uh, boy, oh boy, save the day. But uh, that's what happens when you you run a backup. He's still looking. If you if you're interested in being a writer at Geek News Central, drop me a line, and uh, might be getting ready to open up uh, one or two more writer spots. So geeknews at gmail.com if you're interested in being a writer. And, uh, of course, we're running the, the new EXR1R camera on this, uh, on this particular view on the show tonight. And uh, so I think I've got it dialed in pretty close to where I want it. Love this camera. It's heavy. But uh, we took, it, uh, took my uh, mom out to the uh, North Shore, and I was shooting some video out there with it. Oh, what a camera. It ought to be. Considering the price tag, but oh my God, what some be just absolutely beautiful. So it's a nice uh, camera to have in the lineup. And it really, you know, I've, what I've done here is I put the Zoom Z1U that is um, been used to be the frontal shot. It's on the side now. The uh, the smaller camera, we're going to send that back to Sony and have them uh, basically do some work on it, uh, clean the sensors, make sure it's white balanced correctly, just do a regular maintenance run on it. It's been in use now for. Oh, boy, what have I got? How many years have I had it? Uh, we took it to CES the first year in 2007. So it's had three years of real heavy usage. So that's uh, that's going to go in into the repair shop. But uh, we'll probably cycle the Z1U in as well, getting ready for, for CES. Now let me just talk a little bit about CES, uh, CES 2011. Um, had a um, uh, sent our furniture order in, sent our carpet order in. I kind of got an idea where we're going to be located it's not quite where we thought originally we were going to be. Irregardless, it's a great spot. We're kind of in a corner, and it's going to make it real good, give us a little extra room on the side. Um, had a few things I'm talking with the CEA about, but everything is uh, is ramping up, moving forward. We're uh, I'm getting ready to drop the uh, the Internet uh, order form, 5900 bucks for the Internet. <laughs> yeah, for four days. It's insane, isn't it? And uh, getting ready to drop the power order, and really, I did my power calculation, and we're good. But boy, I was didn't want to bust at 20 amp level because if you do that, what happens? You put you in a whole new category, and you have to have all kinds of special stuff. But uh, we stayed at 15 amps, so we should be good for power for CES. And uh, things are tracking. We had a uh, meeting uh, late Saturday, talking with the team, and everything is really coming together and gelling. So I'm excited about that. And we're really like 87, 86 days away, so, you know, the time is fast approaching. The podcast awards uh, still, you know, I'm a little shy on reviewers, and I'm getting lots of emails. What's going on with the podcast awards? What's going on with the podcast awards? And I'm really torn. I'm still torn on what to do, and uh, it, I'm just going to have to, at this point, I'm going to work at Blog World and, and seeing if I can get some other podcasters to assist and help out in the uh, – really the 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 putting on of the awards this year because i just can't uh, do it with the number of bodies that i have uh basically have volunteered for it at this point so uh let's see how that works out and i'll let you guys know after blog world now there is going to be no show on friday i'm going to be in vegas with the team from raw voice we have our booth if you're in vegas at blog world come by a, a booth number 516 we want to see you and if you're available saturday at 12 15 come to my session the, the triple play I actually did the, got it all done, got the presentation done, and I said, okay, I uh, got my wife and my mom and my kids, and I said, okay, start the stopwatch, and I had the uh, presentation up on the, basically uh, put the laptop on a uh, little corner uh, table we have and plugged it into the big screen, and I went through the slides and uh, finished up at 33 minutes. It was kind of where I wanted to be on the slide so I could have plenty of time to talk to the audience. And my mom says, well, you're going to talk a little slower, so you better add another five minutes on there. So I figured, okay, 38 minutes or so, um, that'll be good, leaving about 20 minutes for, for questions. And I'm really happy with and I'm, and I'm like my fifth or sixth draft. So um, if you're in Vegas for Blog World, come to my session, the Triple Play. I'm going to reveal some stuff there that I have not revealed to this point. And the only place you're going to get that information is at Blog World. And if you're uh, watching the live stream, you'll be able to check that out, too, because they're going to be live streaming everything um, as well. And I was talking with Rick about that. We'll see how um, that goes for him. He's, you know, he says he's working with a firm, and 
we're talking actually talking about the price of doing that and it's it's uh oh anyway all that was covered in the morning tech show on saturday that i did that i hope you're you're checking out all right let me look at my list here and make sure that i've got everything covered i wanted to before we get into tech that's what you guys have come from come for and i think i'm good and one last thing we got to do here is uh got to put some gas in my car so uh make sure that uh you know to save some money you do it by using go to meeting you know meeting with clients and colleagues is important businesses travel is is really a hassle it really really is you have to wake your up early you have to deal with parking you got to get you know fight the airport tra for airport crowd you got to go through security you know it just sucks it really really does and you know you may go somewhere for just a short one or two hour meeting and why really why why do that you know, instead of getting in a vehicle and driving somewhere or flying someplace or, you know, having to stay overnight in a hotel somewhere just for a short meeting, you know, use the award-winning online meeting service brought to you by Citrix. With just a click, you can host sales presentations, training sessions, product demos right from your desk, and avoid the hassle of traveling and still exceed your sales goals. Plus, GoToMeeting is just $49 a month for unlimited online meetings. Host five or 100 meetings for one flow rate. One low rate and uh, you get that voice over ip service too so that's pretty cool i've actually stick my little voice ip camera right down here and uh, when i'm not doing the show it sits right there and i'm able to um, use the uh, microphone in that and doing meetings it works out perfect so as a listener of this show this is uh, pay attention to this address because it's a little different go to meeting.com click on the try it free button enter the promo code podcast p-o-d-c-a-s-t and you'll get a free 45-day trial of GoToMeeting by going in, gotomeeting.com, clicking on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code PODCAST. A great 45-day trial for you there. Give it a try. Let us know what you think. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on what you like or dislike about the product, and uh, we can always send that up the food chain. Thanks for GoToMeeting for being a longtime sponsor here. And, of course, they do more than put gas in my car, but uh, I don't know why that came to me at, the, at all of a sudden. But I guess I was, we were talking about how much fuel we use here in Hawaii and the price of fuel. We're doing that, talking about that at dinner time. And <laughs> so I got gas on the brain, I guess. Okay, let me go ahead and um, loading the wrong window. And now we want this one is what I want. There we go. All right, let's just start off here and talk about uh, kids' behavior related to computer usage. You know, this morning... My little one, my seven-year-old, um, I, 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 we slept in a little bit today. Um, got, of course, the kids here in Hawaii hit, are on an actual, because they have such a long school, um, well, they go school year-round, and their schedule is really wacky. So they were off all last week and, of course, today for Columbus Day. So my wife and I slept in. My mom kind of did too, but I woke up, and the kids were already on the computer. You know, mom and dad are asleep. I didn't really, I didn't sleep in long, 7.30, okay? That was sleeping in here, out for around here. And uh, so we got up, you know, made some breakfast and drinking some coffee and, you know, just chit-chatting along. And, you know, the next thing you know, it's 9 a.m. The kids are still playing the computer. And I'm like, you can get off. And Grandma's like, yeah, you guys get off. You know, go outside and do something. And, uh, man, my, my uh, seven-year-old, he just had a, for a better word, a fit. He wanted to continue to uh, do what he was doing. And playing the game he was playing on a computer. And uh, I got to thinking about it. And the kids have had a lot of screen time over the last uh, week and a half. Just, you know, it's, they've been off and letting them do a little extra. And uh, it's usually not a behavioral issue. We don't have that kind of problem around here as far as, you know, you cut the TV off, you cut the TV off, games and so forth. But uh, there's a study out saying too much screen time is bad, bad for kids' behavior. And... Uh, I thought, hmm, let me look at this, and I'm reading down through here, and what their study that they found is that uh, with kids who are spending more than two hours a day watching a screen, it's, it's impacting their behavior significantly, and it's a study that they did over, um, over at the University of Bristol. Uh, for, it's, a, it's a center for uh, exercise, nutrition, and health sciences in the U.K., and they looked at 1,000 10 to 11-year-olds in this group and talked about uh, those students or those kids having a higher 
uh, physical, physiological difficulty score. In other words, there was more issues with those kids that were spending, you know, significantly more time in front of screens. And uh, kind of, you know, as I was reading this article tonight, it kind of resonated with what happened this morning. And uh, so we normally have a very set amount of screen time. Matter of fact, I love the when they're on the Mac and I have the parental control set up and it tells them, you have five minutes to log off because <laughs> I have time limits set up, right? And uh, they hate it, but, uh, you know, dad rules the, the parental control until they're 18, right? So um, they know they got to get their stuff done. Now, if it's schoolwork, I'll let them do an override. I'll do an override on it as long as it's schoolwork. But uh, other than that, I think it's this article hits home, and it was just, you know, kind of a little bit of a surprise to me. So, yeah, you know, the kid's got a lot of screen time last week, and all of a sudden I'm having this attitude. And, you know, he may just been wanting to play the game. But if there was a tie there, it, it was a little bit, obviously. Hey, there's been a shipping date uh, has come out for the new uh, Logitech Review pre-orders. Uh, pretty quick. They're uh, expecting shipment of these units by the uh, the 21st. And uh, this is big. You know, you're going to get your, uh, your your Google TV fixed by, you know, probably the 22nd or 23rd, depending on what you've selected for shipping. So the question I have for all of you is how many ordered one? I'll have a confession. I, I, I haven't. I, I really haven't. I'm probably going to regret not doing so. But at $299, a $299 price tag is still just rubbing me the wrong way it really is and, and you know I, I just don't uh, oh I don't know 299 is a lot of money for considering when I paid 59 bucks for a Roku $99 for the Apple TV 299 for this is any course the boxy is the same situation so maybe I shouldn't be so irritated I don't know I guess it's just the you know, the whack-a-mole, they keep whacking away at the old credit card and getting. <laughs> so I'll probably, you know, I'll probably acquiesce and I'll probably order one of these here at some point soon just so I can have one and play with it and see what it's going to do. And I'm going to need to know what it's doing for what we're going to have to do for Raw Voice. But because there's no developer package at this point, we're kind of like, well, let's not worry about it until they release it in the, in the spring. Um, so love to hear your guys' uh, comments. Have you ordered one? Did you wait? Uh, if you're waiting, why have you waited? Uh, or, you know, are you excited about getting one hooked up to your TV? Anyway, geeknews at gmail.com. Hey, the, uh, this, is, this is pretty cool. The folks over in, uh, at Spaceship One, this, of course, this is uh, Branson's uh, company with uh, Virgin and doing the, uh, you know, the space flight testing. They, uh, the space tourism vehicle got its first drop today. And uh, they took it to altitude and uh, dropped it. It proved that it would glide and, can, and they could fly it. And uh, they did a landing course out there on the Mojave Desert on the, on the runway. So um, pretty exciting stuff. And he's, you know, he, he did a post interview I saw on another site where he basically says that uh, they're going to do many, many, many drops, many, many tests. And until he feels comfortable in putting his own kids and parents in it, he's not going to put a, a tourist in it. Well, for obvious reasons. But uh, outstanding work by this team out there. And, uh, well, I guess they're going to get some of the administration's money, too, because the president signed in the, the new NASA bill today and uh, making uh, it possible for uh, private companies to get government funding uh, from NASA to uh, build their vehicles. So I'm sure they're going to be there with their hands out uh, to do that. And I don't know what that's going to mean for control or, you know, interoperability with NASA, but uh, that is in effect with that uh, new bill being signed. Hey, let's go ahead and talk just a little bit about Windows Phone 7. Boy, oh boy, you know, and, you know, you get all excited about a new iPhone. You, you know, the droids are kind of rolling out on a regular basis and, and, you know, so your Windows Phone 7, they've never really made a huge impact, but they're getting a lot more buzz than they normally do on any product launch. And, uh, you know, they did it Microsoft style. And uh, Obama was up there and he made a speech, and he, I guess he showed off a half dozen or so, maybe close to a dozen handsets. But uh, there was a huge number, and I'm looking at the picture here of him standing in front of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least nine headsets. But the uh, or handsets, excuse me, and the folks over at Engadget have a pretty good review here. Let me go ahead and bring this up for those of you uh, watching, 
so you can actually see this. Um, they, let me take that down. They, um, you can see in the picture here, a huge number of handsets. Uh, HTC has, it looks, four or five. LG has three. Dell has one. Samsung has two. Asus has one. And they did a, a comparison here on the uh, on the cameras and the, the models and CPUs and the screen size. And there's a lot of the specs are pretty close to one another. The only main difference that I can see on most of the phones from a specification standpoint is the amount of... Uh, the amount of RAM and, uh, or actually the amount of storage, but the actual uh, camera megapixel as well. Uh, the HTC 7 Mozart has an 8 megapixel camera in it, and I, most of the rest of these are all 5s. Uh, the the uh, unit from Asus, they had no specs on that, but uh, this this is all, this 40 by 800 is a pretty standard screen uh, screen size. So a whole bunch of handsets, of course, announced today by the folks over at Microsoft. And uh, congratulations to the launch on Windows Phone 7. Um, God, that article somehow is out of order. So we'll go up here to another article that Engadget has up talking about the, the app review. And uh, that's something that's kind of missing from this launch is the, you know, a large number of apps. You know, obviously Apple is, is on king on that right now. But, uh, you know, there's some games like Tetris, The, the Sims, Monopoly, uh, Need for Speed. Uh, there's some media stuff from uh, Uverse Mobile, Slacker, Netflix, T-Mobile TV. Uh, there's a Twitter app. Uh, what else? eBay and Fandango have uh, some apps on there. But uh, really nothing too, you know, too extraordinary on that standpoint. So I guess we'll see where this goes. Um, over on the actual Windows Phone uh, website at uh, windowssteamblog.com, they've announced a, a developer blog. So they've got a place where people can that are developing apps can go and uh, share information back and forth. Um, they've also got a good write-up of how the new uh, Windows Phone 7 integrates with Windows Live, talking about uh, integration with Hotmail, uh, people, photos, OneNote, Finding your phone, uh, all the different online services. Of course, we know that podcasts are integrated as well, so you'll be able to subscribe to podcasts with your new Windows Phone 7. So all in all, pretty good rollout by uh, Microsoft. We will see how the Windows Phone 7 does. I'm kind of curious if any of you have actually picked one up um, or pre-ordered one. If you did, I'd uh, love to hear from you. And as soon as you get it and start playing with it, I know that a whole bunch of people have, people have had uh, pre-release phones. And uh, so there's been, you know, this thing's been uh, reviewed to death. But what I really want to hear from is I want to hear from uh, John Q. Public, the folks that are actually, you know, don't have a, a uh, you know, a horse in this horse race. I want to hear from you guys that are out there that are picking one of these up saying, this is what I like or dislike about the phone. And uh, it does have some cool stuff. So I'm going to have to uh, get my hands on one and play with one. But... Uh, yeah, let's hear from you, all of you out there and how you like the Windows Phone 7 as compared to the Droid or the uh, the iPhone. Hey, over at geektonic.com, this is one of the blog listings that was submitted by listeners like you or viewers like you. And uh, our folks, over, our friends over at Pogo Plug, uh, you guys know I've, uh, I'm a big Pogo Plug fan. I, matter of fact, I have one. Well, let me go back. If I can point right underneath this desk, right down there, I have one hooked up to a hard drive. It's a Gen 1 uh, Pogo Plug. But uh, they've launched a new Pogo Plug, to net, and I'm glad that they consulted a, a color specialist because the pink ones they had before, I am sorry. It's not in a device that I would have had somewhere in my office where it could have been seen. <laughs> Pink is not the color that you have for a device that's for, for geek and techie types. Now, they've come up with a nice black or gray design. And uh, so anyway, this new new device, and it, it really doesn't talk about, you know, all the new features, but um, it's out and available. And I'll, I'm going to reach out to the Pogo Plug folks and find out what the uh, what the new features are. Now, here's the, here's the strange part on this. Um... 
I would have expected this to have come just a few weeks before um, CES, but obviously they want to get it out there in the in the uh, retail chain for the holidays. So uh, it makes sense. October, you know, people are going to be starting now to mind shift towards, okay, what am I going to be buying for a snick and other, a friend, or, you know, give something away. So I'm sure this is why it's out now. And uh, so it's got some new hardware inside. I'll find out more for you, and we'll, we'll get back with you on that. All right, over on tech, actually, excuse me, the New York Times in the personal tech section, you know, why do people I'm, – I'm, first of all, I'm glad that this is not a study that was done by our, uh, our, our government. I'm glad this was a study that was done by the Wi-Fi Alliance and all those partners at uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance that pay big, big bucks to be part of it so that they can have the little Wi-Fi logo on their devices. You know, those companies all have to be part of the Wi-Fi Alliance in order to put those logos on their devices, right? Well – the Wi-Fi Alliance has come out with a study saying that 75% of American respondents to a survey sponsored by them said that a week without Wi-Fi would have been – would leave them grumpier – grumpier – that's exact words – leave them grumpier than a week without coffee or tea. The poll conducted by Wakefield Research includes responses from more than 1,000 millennials, those between the ages of 17 and 29 in the United States and 400 millennials in China, Japan, and South Korea. So – uh you know, okay, what's your choice? No internet for a week or coffee or no coffee for a week? <laughs> Duh. But I'm, I'm truly surprised it's not higher than 75%. So there must be some serious caffeine addicts out there to have said that they would be willing to go a week without coffee over a week without Wi-Fi. And what it really boils down to is that they're saying Wi-Fi enables them to have entertainment, connectivity. You know, for me, can, uh, okay, I don't need Wi-Fi for a week. Let me just plug into an Ethernet connection. But today's, today's devices, you know, you're mobile. You're either connected to a mobile device or upon some free Wi-Fi. Here in Hawaii, not a lot of free Wi-Fi. So unlike the, you know, I guess the rest of the country, uh, it's not that prevalent. But uh, I don't think there's anything too shocking in this. Um Go without your coffee for a week or go without Wi-Fi for a week. And for me, it's – for me, I don't coffee or tea. I don't drink hardly any coffee anyway. You know, one or two cups on a weekend, that's about it. Hey, over – going to shift gears here a little bit. Over at GigaOm.com – actually, excuse me, over at NewTV.com, which is a GigaOm property. And I love this, these guys' blog. They really do a great job. They keep me up to speed on a lot of stuff. If it's not a site that you're subscribed to, you ought to be. Um – they talk about networks playing a dangerous game in retransmission fights. And, uh, you know, I, I love to see these fights because it just, you know, causes more disheartment with the uh, cable providers. But you know that cable TV blackouts due to retransmission disputes has been on the increase. You know, it's anything from football games to uh, uh, the Academy Awards to uh, MTV highlights. You know, just anything that is uh, on a certain network where the other networks have to pay for retransmission rights and cable providers are, uh, you know, these, these battles are going on now and it's causing blackouts where some consumers are not getting, I should have took that, over, sorry about that. It's, some consumers are not getting some programming. Well, you know, you take the uh, MTV awards that happened this year. They weren't, I couldn't get them here, but, a large majority of the MTV awards was streamed uh, live on the internet. And uh, the only reason I know that is because I subscribe to a magazine that talks about these types of events that uh, are streamed and uh, what's going on in that space. And, you know, for me, it was like, wow, they did like 60 hours worth of content uh, all on the, on the net and uh, beyond what was available or what would have been seen during the regular award ceremony that MTV has every year, the, the music awards they have. So um, has it affected you? Have you had issues where you wanted to watch the Academy Awards, but you lived in an area that didn't have retransmission rights, and that was essentially, you know, they, they run a rerun of something else on there during that time frame? Have you been uh, impacted by that? Have you been impacted by a live sports event 
that uh, is not necessarily a normal blackout area, but but maybe retransmitted to, you know, through a another network. If you, you know, if you miss football games that way, is it irritating you enough to be able to move online? You know, I guess that's the thing I want to know. Is this uh, causing a? Uh, is it impacting your consumption of content through the regular bloop tube? Or do you even care at this point? Let's talk about the Apple TV for just a second. Boy, oh boy. Apple has gotten just beat up. They got two black eyes here. There's a lot of people that are not impressed with the new Apple TV. Folks over at GigaOM say, the UI needs an overhaul. The remote doesn't work. Home sharing is a mess. I agree. Have yet to be able to have my Apple TV see anything on my network. We got everything enabled, but it's basically saying it's not there. It doesn't exist. They have blown that completely. Um, matter of fact, <laughs> it's so bad that uh, my wife says you might just throw that thing in the trash. She said, That's serious. She told me throw throw the Apple TV in the trash. She said it was worthless, and um, so. Have you ever had problem getting a thing working on home sharing? Have you got that to work? What's the secret? What's the secret to make that happen? Please tell me. All right, I'm going to share this with you guys. This is something I, I thought, you know, I, I talk about needing a vacation from time to time and not actually taking any. And uh, this is actually an advertisement that was done by Royal Caribbean. I want to play it for you, though, because it's it's just too cool. And let me go ahead and fade in here to the article. This was over at socialbrandingblog.com. Um, you'll be able to hear everything that's shown in the video. Those of you that are up on uh, the stream or watching the video can actually kind of see it. But uh, check this out. Oh, I'm going to wait for it to load here. Let's pretend that you're an average person. Not average as in boring, but as a mathematical statistic. This year, you'll spend 261 days commuting to work, filling out timesheets, and wondering what's for dinner, if you don't work weekends. As a reward, you'll get 13 vacation days, the lowest in the free world. What's worse, you won't even use three of your vacation days because you're just too busy. Now think of everything you could have done with your days. Multiply your three wasted vacation days by the 153 million workers in the U.S., and it turns out America gave up over 459 million vacation days in 2009 alone. Whoa. That's over a million years of unused vacations in one year. How did that happen? Guilt, you feel fear. guilty taking time <laughs> off, and you're afraid of being replaced. That's a shame considering how good vacations are for you. Not only are you 82% more productive when you get back, but studies suggest you'll live longer. So the next time you ask yourself, why go on vacation? Just make your getaway and say, why not? So what there is here, there's an ad for uh, Royal Caribbean Cruises. But I thought it was interesting statistics that we throw that many vacation days away a year. That to me was pretty shocking. And... Um, you know, when I was in the military, you got 30 days worth of vacation a year. We could carry 60 days on the books, but anything that we were, had over 60 days on the books when we we would use or lose. You had to use it or lose it. And uh, I did my, boy, I mean, I really, over the 25 years that I was, or 24 years that I was in the Navy, I worked really hard to make sure I didn't lose any of those days. And in the end, in 25 years, I only lost four days. Four days of vacation over 25 years is not bad, considering that I got, you know, this 30 days worth of, of leave. Now, the thing that was different about military leave is Saturdays and Sundays count. You know, you're, it's not like you're getting uh, a Monday through Friday is five. A sa six, Saturday and Sunday don't count. Those actually count towards your deductions when you're, you know, you're, you're gone for a couple of weeks. Unlike the civilian world, where if you take 40 hours worth of vacation, it's, you know, Monday through Friday and your weekends are still, you still own those. And, um, but this is, uh, this is a, something for all of us to think, you know, not, you know, this is not geeky, but this is something we all should sit back and go, huh, maybe we should all make sure we take our vacation days. But, you know, it's true. There's a lot of pressure in the workplace. You're taking vacation again. My God, how many vacations have you taken? You didn't hear it from your boss now, right? Well, boss, I got, you know, I got. 25 days on the books or, or 180 hours or 250 hours. You're going to let me. And they look at you funny and you're thinking, am I going to come back to a job? 
And of course, you know, here in the United States, as I said, we have the least amount of vacation days of anyone else in the in the in the free world, with the average uh, vacation days being thirteen. So, um, not including holidays, of course. But uh, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Anyway, pretty cool pretty cool video by Royal Caribbean. They did a good job on that one. I'll, I'll give them a, a two thumbs up. Hey, over on uh, let's let's change the peer to peer discussion here. Uh, music industry has failed in a court bid to force three strikes on an ISP in the uh, in Ireland. The Irish Recorded Music Association uh, tried to force uh, an internet service provider called UPC to disconnect subscribers who they claim had been caught illegally sharing files. The UPC refused, and today it was announced that ISP has won the fight. That uh, they're not going to have to unplug those people. For three strikes, so this is uh, this is this is good news uh, between uh, for users that are affected by the R I R M A. Um, glad to see this judgment come down, and it says that uh, essentially that uh, they don't have to comply. So congratulations to that big win for uh, internet users. In uh, they have to you know get their internet through. Uh, those variety of uh, internet service providers in that country. Hey, Comcast is going to launch 2,000 hotspots for subscribers. Comcast has followed Cablevision's uh, basically what they're doing, and they're they're launching free Wi-Fi across the northeast service area. So uh, what they're doing is they're launching 2,000 hotspots in Jersey, Philadelphia, and uh, I guess an Xfinity broadband account is required, and that account information is used to log into the network. Now, I don't know how that's all going to tie in. But if you're in one of those service areas, just call Comcast to find out how to to get online. He in space news, boy, I tell you, just duck because we've got an asteroid coming by, and uh, it's going to be pretty close, 28,000 miles. This thing is, uh, I guess, about uh, how big is it? 20 feet, uh, six meters wide, and expected to silently drift on by. They said if it wasn't, uh, if it even if it impacted the atmosphere, that it would end up being burned up through the uh, re-entry process, so we don't have to worry about that, even if it does decide to make a course correction. <laughs> but, um, so, you know, pretty close in uh, space terms, really. All right, a private space capsule set for November test flight. A uh, private unmanned spacecraft designed to ferry supplies. The International Space Station is slated to launch on its first demonstration flight. Scheduled for early November, the Dragon Space Capsule built by Space Exploration Technologies, the Hawthorne, California-based Space private space flight company is going to be uh, putting this into orbit with a Falcon 9. We've talked about the Falcon 9 before and how it had a successful, finally a successful flight last time. So uh, this is scheduled to uh, launch from Cape Canaveral and should follow a flight plan that is nearly identical to SpaceX inaugural uh, Falcon 9 test that took place in June. So um, this is COTS. This is commercial off-the-shelf hardware that's going to be... Uh, uh, be uh, using to uh, hopefully in the near future delivering stuff to the ISS. The uh, the car the space capsule is designed to haul up to thirteen thousand two hundred and twenty eight pounds, or six thousand kilograms of cargo to a low Earth orbit, and return from about six and return about six thousand six hundred fourteen pounds. Doesn't say if it's going to actually return it or burn up on reentry. That's interesting. Is it actually going to return? Hmm. Very, very cool. Anyway, this is uh, exciting to see this launch go down in uh, in early November. The uh, With the shuttle basically uh, program ramping down, uh, NASA contractors have been being laid off. Another 900 were laid off today. So, uh, boy, oh, boy, lots of folks getting their pink slips over there and uh, will be on the hunt for jobs. So, uh, boy, workers all across the country are being affected by this. So, uh are any of you, you know, in that industry? I know we have a few listeners that actually work down at uh, KSE. Um, are you being affected by this at all? Are you uh, on the chopping block? I'd love to hear from you. I really would. Let us know what your situation is, and uh, are you on the hunt? And are people finding jobs? Are they moving into these private industry companies that are, you know, ramping up? Or how's that working? Have you seen this Google car? Apparently, Google's been drawing a you know, self-guided uh, vehicle all over the Pacific Coast Highway and uh, in and around Mountain View, logging over 140,000 miles on it. This car's been seen twice. Robert Scoble saw it in January, and another guy saw it back last October. 
But Google has come out of the closet today and basically said, hey, we've been, uh, you know, we've got a car on the road, that, a couple cars on the road that are automated and we're, you know, they're driving themselves. Now, what's weird about this is there's been no public notice of this. And they informed, uh, you know, California Highway Patrol and a bunch of people there and this uh, regulatory people in the state. And they all were cool with it. Uh, they got a driver in the vehicle, one guy sitting in front, one guy sitting in back. So I guess uh, this testing's been going on a while. Kind of a weird project for Google, but if you live on the West Coast and you see one of those things, man, grab a picture because the videos I saw, it looks like it's got a spinning, almost like it looks like maybe a radar up on top, maybe a LiDAR or something. I don't know, but uh, it's definitely a spinning orb. You know, it's basically a cylinder. And, uh, man, I'd like to see more on the technology that they're using. So there has to be some... I don't know if they're using what radar they're using and what kind of frequency band. It's uh, it's very cool. I want to I want to know more on how they're doing that and how they're doing it safely because uh, they've got to be using some sort of some sort of radar to pinpoint how things are going. But you can see this thing spinning pretty fast. Um, but uh, keep you advised, and we'll see if we can find out more information on that. Hey, over at uh, nine to five Mac at nine to five Mac dot com. There, we're talking about the new 3G video calling has come to the Yahoo Messenger app. So if you uh, are looking for that for your iPod Touch or your uh, – oh, it doesn't work on the iPod Touch. But if you want this for your iPhone and you use Yahoo Messenger a lot, you can do 3G calling with it and uh, video. So uh, give that a run for the money and see how it works. I'll definitely be downloading it and, uh, and checking it out. All right, you know GM? Boy, oh, boy, big news on GM today, and this is uh, – this is going to make a lot of people go, hmm. The Volt we thought was this all-electric vehicle. It wasn't going to be – the powertrain wasn't supposedly going to be driven by the gas motor that's in the car that was supposedly only going to be used to charge the battery. Well, over at autoblog.com, it's being reported that the 2011 Chevy Volt will have a direct mechanical connection to the wheels. Didn't you guys all think this was going to be a completely electric vehicle? General Motors has kept on saying that it's an extended range electric vehicle was just an electric car with a gasoline powered generator on board, but this is not the case. So what we have is another hybrid. Here's where the here's where the discovery came. G has confirmed late in the game that the Volt can, in some situations, use the ice to power the wheels. This came to light after Motor Trend was allowed to test the car for three long drives and discovered that when going above 70 miles per hour in a charge sustaining mode and the generator gets coupled to the drivetrain, the gas engine participates in the motive force. GM says the engine never drives the wheels all by itself but will participate in this particular situation in the name of efficiency, which is improved by 10 to 15 percent. Now, this is opposite of what GM has said for years. Then where they said there was no mechanism, no, none, zero, none, none, to drive the Volt with a powertrain, a gas powertrain. So, um... I don't know. What do you think about this? Do you care? If you're a GM fan, you should be. Don't 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 we don't we the public still own GM? I wonder what their stock price did today. This is a nice little re revelation, right? So uh, anyway, this is uh, huh. interesting. Interesting indeed. Anyway. I'll move on. I guess you guys maybe don't care. <laughs> Geeknews at gmail.com. Hey, Crucial has launched a 1.8-inch SSD. Uh, Andrew did an article over this at Geek News Central for me today. Matter of fact, he was almost immediately contacted by another company and said, hey, we want to send you a, one of our 1.8 SSDs. And uh, so he's going to uh, be getting a drive to test and uh, be doing some more reporting. But uh, Lexar Media has added a 1.8 range of SSDs to its Crucial Real SSD Core 300 product line. 
and uh, these uh, drives are available at 64 one 256 start at a penny shy of 150 bucks. And uh, the Crucial website does not say when the 1.8 version goes on sale. But I actually had an interesting conversation with another group today that's doing some stuff. And I asked if their unit came with an SSD drive, and he said no. He says we're using a, a specific type of hard drive. And I said, well, why is that? He says um, we can absolutely guarantee consistency in the speed of the drives. He said there's too much variation in uh, the write and read speed on SSD drives. He says it's all over the chart. And, you know, we have to have in this particular product that I was talking to them about, have to have a drive that is consistently performing at the same level. And I thought, that's weird. I need to check into that. So if you've, any of you have heard anything like that already, I'd love to t uh, get some articles to kind of prove or disbunk what I was told. But uh, it is an interesting, uh, it was an interesting conversation nonetheless. And uh, the particular drives this company was using was Hitachi, Hitachi drives. Hey, uh, Trucker Tom wrote an article on the Geek News Central entitled Tune In. And uh, this is a good one. And it talks about, uh, you know, how the, you know, what's happening with the, what's in our pockets. Primary, uh, the most useful computer is the one in your pocket. And, uh, and the software available to run on it today, and he does a comparison to, you know, his dad brought a uh, AM radio home in the early '60s that was, uh, you know, one of the new ones with the, uh, with the small transistors or conventional transistors. But uh, he goes into, you know, how we're able to tune in now to almost anything with a, with a, you know, a, a mobile device. And of course, uh, Tom spends a lot of time on the road, and he absolutely you know most definitely is a power user when it comes to a mobile device because he's not places all the time where he can get online with his laptop uh, he uses mobile cards and everything else to stay connected and when you're a truck driver that's that's just the way life is and it's getting better than what it was but he talks about the the ability now of all these apps to do things that uh, you know he had to rely on a computer before so it's good good write up uh, thanks for trucker time for putting that together for us he just want to take here just a second and uh Talk a little bit about Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft is a company that uh, I'm working with. It's helping to grow my business, and they have some great tools. Uh, they're helping me with some uh, CRM, uh, CRM uh, software, they're doing some automation type stuff, uh, even working on a new shopping cart for some things they've got going on. So Infusionsoft can really help small companies, and they're helping me. And as a small business owner, you may want to check them out as well. Um, you can really do that, and you can help the show here as well. As we start rolling out more of their stuff, I'll be talking a lot more detail about it. But if you go over to Infusionsoft.com forward slash pod one, and you want to learn about Infusionsoft services, you can fill out the little questionnaire they have on the right-hand side of the page and watch their demo video. Uh, if it's something that interests you, you know, go ahead and move forward with it. If it's not, uh, don't worry. They're not going to be uh, it hassling you. Uh, but uh, definitely check them out, infusionsoft.com forward slash pod one, a sponsor here at uh, at Geek News Central. All right, let's talk about uh, a light show. And I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put this link up in the show notes. It was an article on Gizmodo. This is the coolest light show video I've seen in a while. And it's a, a skyscraper lit up. And I, I don't I don't fully understand how they did it. I'm, I need to find out how they did it, but once you see this thing, you're going to be like, whoa. And uh, anyway, I'm going to dig in to find out how they did it, but just you're going to see this. It's it's totally cool. I told you early in the show when we were getting started that we would have talk about a mind-blowing weight loss app. I didn't really use that term in the beginning. But imagine, imagine. You have uh, someone take a video of you <laughs> at the beach. And boy, you don't want to really see me at the beach. Um, you know, talking to a beach whale. <laughs> um, there's, an, there's, a, there's a video app. Now, it's not something you run on your phone. But there's a video app now that can transform you in instant weight loss and size you down. And when you see this video on how they can reshape people digitally now, on the fly with a slide of a slide bar. Yeah, any of you went into Second Life, 
And Second Life, all you do is you go in there and you set up your, your avatar. Um, you, you make yourself fat, skinny. You put your body dimensions in whatever order you want. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of fun. But this can be done, and this is scary. I'm thinking to myself, wow. It can totally change. the. As long as you're shooting on green screen, you can do anything. And it's just with a little tweak. A little tweak, and it looks 100% normal. They use some Baywatch footage and some other types of stuff. Just check it out. Check this video out. This will make you sit back and go, that's dangerous in the wrong hands. It's, it's cool. It's really cool, and they got to get you on a green screen, obviously. But um, holy smacks, this thing is this thing is cool. It really is what they've been able to do. And it's with a group at... Uh, <sighs> What was the site? It's called Movie Reshape, and I don't know what the actual name of the company is that did this, but Movie Reshape is the name of the technology. Link will be up in the show notes. You guys can check it out. He, the FCC chairman has come out and talked about why we need more wireless spectrum, and uh, as you know, the FCC has asked for 500 megahertz of new uh, spectrum over the, uh, the next 10 years, trying to get at least half of that within the first five, and a, a majority of that's going to be open source and basically – uh, not controlled by cable providers. We'll see. But uh, he goes into uh, talking about this uh, really in detail for the first time and answers some questions. So this article over on GigaOM, I have the link up for you in the show notes on that. Check it out. But uh, they've got a big challenge ahead of them. And he says, one of the things he says here I find interesting, a year ago, and I don't believe this, I think people were talking about bandwidth needs. At least we were on this show uh, talking about that before. He says, a year ago, no one was talking about the spectrum shortage in this country. And now we're moving towards solving that problem. According to some estimates, the demand for mobile broadband means that in three years, the current amount of spectrum will not be enough. The FCC and its national broadband plan has asked for 500 megahertz of new wireless spectrum, of which, excuse me, 300 megahertz it wants freed up in the next five years. So it goes on to talk more about that. But uh, we have known we're going to run out of bandwidth and, and, and airspace for a while. Why is this a surprise, really? I've traveled a lot in Asia, and I and I can tell you this the result of this survey I'm going to share with you. It really just kind of makes so much sense to me. And what they did is they talk about social networking in different countries. And the Japanese, and of course I'm married to a Japanese woman. She's from Okinawa, and she's not. She hasn't been a super techie. She's still, you know, you know, she struggles with technology for a better word. But in Japan, the least popular or least uh, social are the Japanese, the South Koreans, and Tanzania, where in Japan, the number of friends on social networking is as low as 29, with South Korea having 50. I was actually kind of surprised about that. But this doesn't surprise me at all. M Malaysia and Brazil, where everyone's outgoing and very friendly. I've traveled a lot in Malaysia, and people are very warm and you know they're inviting and they want to talk and um have never been to brazil but i can only imagine because you see stuff with festival and everything else that brazil should be the same kind of feel like the same way um norway was high in the list too so malaysia and brazil 233 231 with norway at 217 but it says that uh well, malaysians are social butterflies the japanese are online loners and i i can understand that i really do with the japanese culture the way it is um because a lot of japanese still are kind of at least the way i've seen it recently they're still you know they they like technology but they again it's you know very much within the confines and they don't talk to friends about that kind of stuff so it is it is curious um how this breaks down so anyway i'll have this link up in the show notes where you can check it out the full details Hey, you know, one thing I've always said is not what you know, it's who you know. And, you know, when you're getting ready to do it for a job interview or look for a job, man, your friends, uh, your your inner circle, friends of friends, you know, that all is how you find a job, right? It's, you know, you can send your resume off to 100 companies, but really it's when you know someone, say, hey, here's my, you know, I'm going to send my resume in. Can you let them know that HR is coming? And when someone within a company makes a recommendation for someone, you know, it's like an instant, because, that person is not going to make that recommendation to an HR person unless they know that person and they're willing to stand behind it because HR is going to, you 
you were the guy that said this guy was good, right? Or this gal was good. And, you know, we got an issue. We need to talk. You know, you're not going to recommend someone unless you know that person is really going to be reliable. So uh, a gentleman by the name of Jason Mitchell, owner of Movement Strategy, is a digital marketing agency that helps brands such as the New York Knicks, says that the first thing they do when they're looking for new employees is they have their entire in their entire uh, base of employees send out inf uh, notices on Facebook and Twitter, and when they get responses of interest from friends of those individuals, that's how they prefer to stack, rack and stack resumes. So I'm going to tell you, get out there, be social. If you're not, you know, if you're looking for a job, this may help you. Apple, boy, oh boy, what is what is their deal in trademarks? They trademarked. There's an app for that. You know, <laughs> you know what? We're going to be able to – soon it's going to be when we talk or write anything online. Apple today, beep, did this because of – because they're going to own all the doggone trademarks to every phrase in the book. What is the deal with these – there's an app for that. How can they be – how can they get a trademark for that? They filed this on December 4th, 2009. I guess I better go out and I better trademark, strap in, here it comes. Because <laughs> that's kind of like a little trademark for the show, right, when we start. But am I going to go out and register it? Now, I'm sure some smart on the show is going to go out and file for a trademark for strap in, here it comes. And then they're going to get the doggone thing and say, Todd, you have to pay me. <laughs> prior art baby i got the prior art and i'm sure thousands of other companies have had used that tagline before but you know come on there's an app for that we need this there's not an app for that <laughs> wow don't you think it's a little bit out of control i do i think it is i really do now the death of uh, regular media is, is man boy oh boy this this new report from mobile beat has to have the television networks even more scared than they already are. Is the iPhone and the here's the here's the header. Is the iPhone the next American Idol? You think? No. The daily the daily audiences for apps that run on Apple's iOS operating systems has now surpassed 19 million users who spend an average of 22 minutes per day using those apps. According to one measure, that means that the audience for the iOS devices is now bigger than the NBC's Sunday Night Football and just shy of the audience of ABC's Dancing with the Stars. Only 4 million daily viewers separate the iOS audience from that of the number one ranked TV show, American Idol, according to data collected by analytics firm Flurry. That's pretty cool. It really is. But you know what? Here's what they don't really talk about. You're using those apps while you're sitting in front of your TV because you're still consuming, on average, the average American is still consuming four, yes, four hours of television every day. Okay? You, you knew that, right? Hmm. So what does that mean? It means that we're multitasking. We're using our, our uh, iPads. We're using our iPhones. Or why we're still watching the bloob tube. So we're, you know, what we're doing, we're watching the shows and then, you know, fast forwarding through the commercials and then, you know, using our apps during slow periods. They're open and running. Maybe we're not actively using them, but that's where they're collecting this data. So uh, what does that mean for advertisers that are advertising on TV? You better shift. You better shift to media like this because I'm going to review some stats when we go to Blog World that are going to blow people away. All I can say is we're capturing some of that four-hour period in heavy numbers. Okay, short extension span for web videos. The New York Times reporting at Business Day, ever watching an online video for a full minute, 44.1% of us check out. This is according to Visible Measure, but it outsizes the slice of loss that occurs in the first 10 seconds, which is 19.4%. So within the first 10 seconds of watching video, most of you... 19.4% of you bounce. 
Another 44.1% ban it after 60 seconds because you're watching it online. It's not happening in front of the TV because you're purposely going to some content. So uh, that means those of you that are putting advertisements in your content, you better do it in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> and then you probably have a higher chance of people clicking away anyway. Interesting stuff. It's uh, it's stats time with Todd. Okay. Good article about a vanishing journalistic divide and how journalism is shifting into our media space and how journalists are finally giving up the fight and they're joining uh, some of the bigger blogging operations. So good, kind of interesting dynamic there. Soon the new media will be the media, and then they're going to be having the same issues that the media has. <laughs> and someone else will become the new media, so only time will tell. Hey, article we're on uh, CNET talking about an Apple complaint that halted the sa uh, sale of some iPhone lookalikes from uh, the Mizu from uh, the China firm. That's been shut down and stopped, so the Chinese took care of that. Hey, imagine you're oh, – obviously, I'm shifting gears here. Imagine you're at a basketball game, and I haven't been to a live National Basketball League game in – years probably 20 years okay just because you know living in hawaii there's no real nba games here but there's a new super microphone that can pick out a voice in a crowded stadium they can point the antenna dish at you focus on your lips and they can break out what you're saying it's called squarehead's new system is like a is like a bullet time for sound 325 microphones sit in a carbon fiber disc above the stadium in a wide angle camera looks down on the scene from the center of the disc all the operator has to do is pinpoint a spot on the court or field or in the audience and the audio scope works out how far that spot is from each of the mics corrects for delay and then synchronizes the audio from all 315 of them the result is a microphone that can pick up up the pop of a bubble gum bubble in the middle of a basketball game this when you see this video I'm not kidding. Wait till you see this video. This is over on Gadget Lab on Wired. This blew me away. This really, really did. It's I was like, whoa. And I'll leave you with that. That's the last article for tonight. I've got a couple of emails to go through here tonight. No voicemails came in on the uh, Hotmail line. So uh, 619-342-7365. Next show we're going to do live is going to be, uh, again, a week from today. And I'm going to be in the uh, great state of Texas uh, from some dimly lit hotel room with horrible bandwidth, I am sure. Uh, I'm actually staying at Hilton property this time in, uh, out in Texas and uh, be looking forward to go out there and having a nice, big, fat, juicy Texas steak and some, uh, you know, some of the barbecue down there. So looking forward to that. But uh, be in Vegas the rest of this week for Blog World and New Media Expo. Let me bring up this uh, email here. And uh, from all of you, and let me read the uh, listener comments. Let's see here. Is this the first one? I got an email here from Jeffrey. And of course, Jeffrey Ramsey is one of our longtime listeners of the show. Uh, Jeffrey is a listener who uh, was uh, shot in his store, and uh, he is uh, um, in chronic pain. But he says, hey, and this is a response to where we talked about uh, some medical coverage in the show on, this, on the sixth anniversary show, six-year anniversary. He says, hey, Todd, you believe Medicare won't play for a treatment that would help me? He says, I'm, tr I'm trying to heal to a point that it's killing me. Anyway, I miss some shows and not getting up as much. People don't know how lucky they are. My site is unorganized, and I haven't found my new business that I can run. Sorry about the shows I missed, but I'm going to renew using your codes. He kind of skips around here. Um, and I'm sure this is partly to do with, you know, the ability of, uh, you know, not being able to type a, a lot. But, uh, you know, it's true. Uh, a lot of these folks that are uh, um, have these uh, long-time medical issues, it's an ongoing battle for treatment. And uh, it definitely is not getting any better. Um, and it's, it's just living proof here that we have an individual that, uh, you know, of no fault of his own, is uh you know trying to recover and become you know more productive to this in society and he can't because he's um he can't get some treatment from medicare so it's pretty sad it really really is and jeffrey take care our thoughts are and prayers are with you my friend and uh i hope that you find some relief at some point 
Got an email here from uh, Phil. He said, hey, Todd, I just heard my name announced on your show this morning as the winner of the Roku. So, of course, I want to make sure that you have my address. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You made me the happiest person in Florida right now. You really made my day, my year, actually. I've been an avid listener since I discovered your show, and I enjoy it very much. Now, I can't wait to watch your show on the big screen. Anyway, my address is below. Again, thank you. Congratulations, Phil. So we'll get uh, his uh, Roku out to him. I get an email from uh, from uh, from Cheddar, and he's uh, provided me some cool links that we're going to add to our RSS feed. Thanks for that, Cheddar. I definitely appreciate those links. Got an email here from Robert Simpson, one of the winners of the Roku as well. He said, hey, Todd, I was watching for emails and uh, haven't seen anything yet. Uh, he says, just in case the Roku or winner was, and he linked up the, his address here. Pretty sure that Robert Simpson was the uh, the winner. I have to go back, but uh, um, just been slammed, Rob. It would definitely get the uh, the Roku out to you. Got an uh, email here from uh, Bayer Brown. He uh, does a show over at Tech Podcast. And uh, he talks about social networks and children. These are five fun and safe social networks for kids. So this is an article over on Mashable that came up on the 11th. So I have this link on the show notes for you to, to check out as well. All right, folks. Well, it's been fun. And you know what? This is the last show that the TriCaster Studio that has taken us since, uh, oh, boy, what is it now? June uh, of 2008 the show has performed beautifully for 230 some shows here in the studio the box uh, is sitting over in the corner uh the original box that it came in i'm going to be packing up the tricaster here and it's going to be fedex to uh in fact i got the fedex paperwork over here on the side it's going to be fedex danny mccaskey over at sdr news for his new venture that he's going to be launching out of elkar indiana and some some new programming that's going to be coming out i'm excited for what andy's going to do Meanwhile, this box is going to head out, and then uh, I'm still waiting for my TriCaster TCD XC850 to be delivered by New Tech. Uh, they're still telling me sometime soon, and it's been that way for 90 days. <laughs> and uh, they're still working on back orders, but you guys know my schedule. I'm going to be gone here really for the next 10 days. We'll be back in Hawaii, or I'll be back in Hawaii for, for two shows only on the, uh, the Monday of the 25th and the Monday of the 28th to do two shows in Honolulu, and then I leave, and I'll be uh, gone on really up, up through almost Thanksgiving. So we're going to be three weeks on the road, and, of course, I'll be doing my uh, taking my remote uh, system with me. So really there's only going to be a need to uh, do two shows here with the, uh, with the TriCaster, and I promised Andy to have it to him by the 15th of October. And uh, so when I come back to Honolulu, we're probably going to be using a little modified setup. I've kind of got an idea what we're going to do. We'll probably use a vid blaster for a couple of shows uh, while I'm home. It'll be a little bit of a different look. We'll still be able to stream uh, on Ustream. Don't think I'll be able to duplicate over on Justin, um, but at least we'll be able to be up on Ustream and get the video captured and get it processed and uh, and put online. So it'll be a little fun, a little different when I come back to Honolulu. But uh, hopefully by then, maybe the uh, maybe the box will be here, and I'll be able to get that set up. It kind of sucks. It really does. This thing's been paid to, since uh, mid-June and a uh, whole bunch of money out of my checking account, yet the box hasn't arrived yet. Um, and it's it's a little bone of contention on my part at this point with uh, the the uh, the manufacturer. My sales guy's been terrific. He really has on you know keeping me abreast of what's going on. But just the demand on this box for people buying this box has been through the roof. And uh, But it's just going to bring a whole new level uh, video production to the show. I mean, you just have no idea what it's going to be capable of doing. You know, we're going to be able to bring two overlays in on the on the video. We're going to be able to do picture in picture with the video stuff running or showing a web page in one and keeping me in another window. There's just a whole level. Plus, we can go to eight cameras. I'll never use eight cameras in this little studio. It'll be always probably a, a four camera studio here. But the way I'm racking and stacking this thing is I'm going to be able to go mobile with it. I'm going to be able to take it different places, different shows. And obviously, we're going to do our big launch with uh, doing shows on the road from CES in January. And that thing's going to be the main driving force. And uh, I'm telling you, it's going to be exciting. It's, this, this box is basically like a full production truck that you had spent multiple millions of dollars on years past, all in the size of a 3U chassis. And uh, it's going to be exciting. It really is. Now, for those of you that listen to the audio portion of the show, you could care less, right? Don't worry. You guys are uh, still my bread and butter, and you guys are the ones that uh, 
the large majority of you take care of the, you know, the bills around here. But I will say this. Since we've launched on the Roku and Boxy, the audience video share has grown beyond my wildest dreams. And I'll be talking more about what I shared at Blog World on the following show in, uh, in Texas and uh, share some of those numbers with you guys so that you kind of know. And you know, we kind of hinted around at this, but I'll talk a little bit more about uh, really what changed the dynamic here at Geek News Central as far as the video portion of the show. Um, it, it really has made a big difference in, in a big way uh, being on those devices. So enough said on that. Anyway, that's it. Everyone, hey, thanks for being here. We'll see you a week from today. Okay, a week from today, I'll be back. Uh, just follow the Geek News Central website at geeknewscentral.com. The writers will be putting up lots of great content. Follow my Twitters at twitter.com forward slash geek news or even on Facebook. And uh, we've got an exciting time for Vegas. I'll get you guys all up to speed on what happened if you're not coming out. Again, Saturday, 12 15. If you're at the show, come to my presentation. It's one that you're not going to want to miss. It's called the Triple Play. And uh, I got a lot to share 60 slides, 33 minutes. And then we're going to have plenty of time for audience uh, participation. Uh, my presentations, if you've been to them before, are boom, 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 boom. And uh, we get through and then have time to, uh, you know, really help people that need help. So I look forward to uh, bringing that to you. Hey, again, everyone take care. 619-342-7365 is the voicemail hotline. Geeknews at gmail.com. It's been terrific. If you guys want to hang, I'm going to hang out after the stream goes down. Or actually, after I hit stop record here. But uh, for everyone else that's listening or watching, we'll see you next time. Aloha.